Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to Terror Tech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the R&D mode, where we're going to be finishing off this vehicle. The vehicle we made in the previous video, our big Bertha build. Now, a lot of you, and I mean a lot of you, have suggested maybe using some of the hover plates to lower the weight of this craft so that these poor little tracks can actually move properly. At the moment, the reason why we're turning so bad Sadly, is because almost everything is overweight. It's far too heavy on these poor, poor little tracks. And honestly, the hover plates would fix this. The only problem is, right now we are in a craft which is naturally tilted. Which means any hover plate we place down is going to also be tilted and will be pushing us backwards. Now, that's not too much of an issue, honestly, as long as it doesn't actually move the craft, and it will take a lot of force for this thing to be moved. So hopefully, that will work. Like I said in the previous video, I did want to add some things to the side here anyway, so some hover items wouldn't be the worst thing. In fact, we could use the Geocorp power lifters, because... Honestly, I just think they look really, really cool. I mean, we could... Really weirdly, we could actually use these to affect our tilt as well, which would be kind of odd to say the least. So let's see how many it would need to have an actual effect then on our turning. How about you go in the correct place? That would be lovely. So there's eight, and honestly, that's not really having all that much effect. Although, it should really be put on the front anyway, since that's the heaviest section. Now, I was also tempted to add some more of our tracks to the side anyway. Almost like little extra sections here, arms going down, which will add some tracks on the very outer layer. Which I think will definitely work better. So maybe I'll just add some hover plates on the inside afterwards to see how much lighter we can make the overall craft. But for now, on the outside... We'll just pretend they don't exist for the time being. We could also use some boosters. That would not hurt. Just for moving backwards and forwards, honestly. A little bit of extra speed certainly wouldn't hurt. Hmm. That's actually surprisingly effective for only one of them. Okay, then. Yeah, we'll definitely add some boosters as well, then. So, let's get to work adding some extra tracks on the outside. So, I want these quite far out. Now, the problem with this, just like this angle in the first place... It's going to be terrible when it comes down to any angle. Well, any angle terrain, I should say. That's definitely going to be the major problem. I also have to be careful with what I'm adding now, honestly, as this could quite easily change the angle I've already set up for the vehicle. And honestly, this is exactly the angle I want. After all the testing, it was the overall best, at least for general purpose. Not so far away, the aiming is difficult, but not so close that it doesn't really have a purpose. I massively underestimated just how heavy this thing is. This is how many tracks we need, an extra one on each of the front sides, and these four for this thing to turn at even a slightly improved rate. Now, thankfully, it has definitely improved the backwards and forwards movement, which is really good if an enemy does get closer, but this has rapidly became one of our largest vehicles. Which is fair, honestly, considering we have nine Bertha cannons. Also, Bertha cannon sounds weird if you don't say big Bertha cannons. Fire the Bertha! I mean, it's just that awesome. Even the cube loses blocks. Yeah, turning is significantly better here. So I'm going to armor up the side here, finish off this section so it looks a bit more upkeeping with the rest of it, and then I'm thinking we still need more on the back though. I think it looks a bit bare, and since we've now widened it, it looks a bit too square as well. It's square and bare. Aim. Now, one comment which was fantastic was, why don't you just look at the map to try and aim the vehicle? And my god, does that make life easier? <laughs> See, I do listen to comments. Even the mean ones. Ooh, I like that. So today, since recording is still being a little bit difficult for me, considering I can't even sit up for more than maybe half an hour at a time, 
I think what we're going to do is just finish off this quickly and then go and do some missions with it. Also, maybe testing out our tank as well. I want to see how well they do, and then in the next episode, maybe we'll make something else or we'll make our final modifications for both of them. At least, that's my current plan of action. Let's face it, normally what I say at the start of the video isn't actually what happens in the end, such as the video with the... AI guns, which I said, oh, this will be a short video, and then it became one of the longest Heretech videos I've ever recorded. I think we're going to do a bit of a change here. So, I am really concerned about this craft not even being able to go up mild inclines. So, what I'm going to do is remove the armor there, and instead, add a couple of these. Ah, the problem is, of course, these won't even be active, though, until we go up an incline, so that's going to look really, really weird. Though we could just move all of these forwards. But then that will really mess with the angle and pretty much everything else, but I think that might be worth it. Just for the sake of my own sanity. Of course, the other problem is then, as well, shielding these is going to be more difficult, so... Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's just put all of these here. Don't really matter if these are equal for a second. Just want to see the angle. Yep, definitely higher up. But this will definitely be able to go up hills better. Oh. Never mind. The fire is actually pretty much the same. Everything else still touching the floor? Looks like it. We could make that work. As long as the tracks are on the very front, it'll just make everything a lot easier. Just rem remove a couple. I still want these to be the larger variants. So these are still overweight in the middle, but that's fine. The front and the back ones now, though, aren't being stressed out, which is good, and turning has been improved. A couple of rotor blades now, a few more hover plates on the center, and a couple more tracks, and this thing is no longer quite as slow as it was. I mean, it's still pretty darn slow, but in comparison, it isn't really that bad. Also, the thrusters definitely help a lot, especially when you first start off. They're not really helping out so much with speed anymore, since I've increased the weight even more, even with the hover blades. But, when you are at a stop, and then you use them, it gets you up to maximum speed very, very quickly. Which is good. Overall, I'm actually quite happy with how it's looking as well. Just need to do some more work on the sides here, and then a little bit more work on the back, and I think we're good to go. Now the thing is, I'm also just not happy with how the Geocorp thrusters look. They're not really in keeping with the style, so I may try to swap them for either GSO or Hawkeye. Since that is the two groups we are using the most here, in fact, almost solely, except for the batteries on the inside. Which you can just about see, because sadly I can't place blocks here, here, or here. Now, there are also these, the Flying Fortress hover plates, which are pretty darn good, honestly, and they look amazing. I especially love the little detail in the center there, the little... Is it a turbine in the center? Is it what's powering it? I don't really know. Either way, it looks awesome. And, yeah, it does actually fit the theme a lot better than the GSO variants. The problem is, it is also in the experimental section, which can be a bit temperamental, to say the very least. Let's go ahead and see how powerful it actually is, though. Let's just put this here. Whoa! Okay, yep, that is really high up. So, with minimal weight, it puts you all the way up here. Oh, no, we are going down. I wonder where the average is going to be, then. Let's add a couple of these. Yeah, that is pretty powerful to go this high. On how powerful the... Geocorp version is. Of course, the Geocorp version is also a lot smaller. Ow. Whee! Oh. Whee! Uh, about the same, maybe? Whoa, okay. Maybe should have added these on first. Okay, so it seems like these react with the terrain a lot more than the experimental version. Or it could just be the weight. Who knows? Let's just get back to that vehicle, please. Thank you. So it seems like I've accidentally lowered the angle a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely lower. Easier to aim, 
And it will be, and it will be better on slopes, but nowhere near as long range anymore. But is that a bad thing? So to change that, all we'd need to do is move these forward, basically. Move these forwards or move these backwards to cause it to be a bit more severe again. But this will deal with terrain a lot better. In fact, I wonder if we could put these underneath here without it changing the angle. No, that's definitely propping it up a little bit. Also, you should actually be further forwards. So it isn't propping it up. We have loads of these in the campaign. I think I have several hundred of these wheels currently saved up. Well, that doesn't hurt anything anyway. Looks a bit odd, though we could, of course, plate it up with armour. Now, the problem with this, though, it would mean things would get stuck here. So I think this would actually do more harm than good. But it wouldn't be difficult to armour up. Of course it wouldn't be perfect like that. There we go. And then one of these here. Um, What do you guys think? I'm not too sure about that. More redundant wheels in more places is rarely a bad thing because it simply means we can always get some traction. Stops us from being beached as much. Pretty decent speed now, actually. Okay, I'll quickly finish this, then we'll go straight back into the campaign. Why too much time already spent here, and my back feels like it's going to break at any moment. So, I'll be right back once we're in the campaign. I'll just save this as it is, and then I'll purchase the stuff we need. And hopefully... We can do some missions and test this out in the field. Since in the previous video we killed like three or four things and then called the episode. So, BRB. Okay, that should be everything bought. So let's go ahead and remove you. I still need to scrap so much stuff in this game. You can go away as well. And apparently at some point I made a clone of myself who now is entering the void. Oh, good timing. Hello. Excuse me, lovely fella. Can we, um... Oh, yeah, that turns so much better than the last version. That is a pleasure to drive in comparison. Mm, maybe about there. Good test fire. A little bit further back. Although, to be fair, if it's any size at all, it will be clipped. Four, three, two, one, fire. Um, is that the... Oh, it's tiny! <laughs> what is with that? Hello! Oh, you're such an impressive, scary invader. Oh no, you might break one of my armor pieces. <laughs> oh, it must have been because I was in the little cab and the invaders are scaled to your size at the time. <laughs> oh, that's unfair. That is horribly, horribly unfair. Oh, <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so funny for. I think it's all of all of that preparation, and then suddenly, nah. First of all, let's get some charge up. Then we'll go and do some missions, eh? There we are. Punks. Remove the punks. Let's see if we can get there. There's some hills there, so we can find out if this can actually deal with hills. Which would be nice. So, we're testing out this, and we're testing out the tank. I really like this craft. I think the style still needs to be improved. Oh, there's a problem. I didn't think about the shield placement. Well, for now, we'll just be lazy. We'll finish this in the not-so-distant future, and we'll just put down a couple of the smaller shield bubbles just here. Is that symmetrical or not? There really needs to be a mirror mode in this. I feel like I haven't quite done it. No, I think I have. Eh, I'll find out afterwards. If there are any problems, don't worry, I'll, I will have fixed it before the next video. A uh, little bit vulnerable here, but they are within the range of the repair bubble. That's the only problem with these, we're not in the range of the repair bubble anymore. But that bubble's covering everything. Yep, the front's still covered. Yep, okay. Man, this takes a long time to charge up. To be fair, there are a lot of batteries in here. Charged up and ready to go. So I don't expect to be able to go over sections like that. There's just no way. It's going to end up beaching itself and getting stuck. 
But sections like this, it couldn't take before. So I'm hoping... Yep, it can just about make it. That's great. That's all I expected. Nothing more, nothing less. Just mild inclines with a bit of a sharp top to them. And as long as it can do that, I am more than happy. All I want to see is if we can get all the way to that mission without having to swap techs. I do like swapping techs so much because it is nice with how many things I've built at this stage, but... I need some independence with the builds, and yet this is much better than before. And you're stuck in the trees. Let me help you! By shooting above you to show you the way you should go. Clearly that was the intent. I mean, only like one of the cannons actually connected then, but that was definitely enough. And there are bits everywhere. Ah, littering. What did I just hit? One of the parts? Yep, they're getting stuck on there, aren't they? Onwards! Are they the punks, or is that another... Look, is this a group of techs there? It looks like a... One of these groups, one of the, um... Venture groups. Hello! Oh, the perfect first shot! Okay. That was lovely. Hmm. Let's try and aim using the map this time. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Oh, that's beautiful. I love this tech. I love this gun. Why did I think anything less of the Bertha cannons? Oh, that was beautiful. Just clearing the way, not even close to them. Absolutely lovely. Is this my favourite tech? It's certainly trying to be. It's certainly trying. I can't believe that hit. Just changing the aim a little bit. I'm currently stuck on a bit of um, corpse, actually. A bit of tech corpse. How about that one there? That one seems a little bit closer. Whoa, yeah, too close. Okay, let's maneuver out then. Let's get the stuff from underneath me. That's better. There it is. Bit too close. Oh, no, it did hit a little bit, I think. Maybe it didn't. I wish there was an easier way to control your angle. Maybe using some of the new items, the exploding ones, the brackets, whatever they're called. Where are you? I actually have no idea where they are in terms of which faction owns them, which section they're in. But there's brackets you can use and they break and they're kind of cool, but I've not tested them yet. Maybe stuff like that might be able to allow us to make something a bit more controllable rather than me trying to find hills. Thank you! Did I actually kill him? Yes, I did. Let's move back to the original target, who's actually further away than I expected. A little bit of damage there, I think. It's hard to tell. No, I'm just hitting the one in front. Okay, let's move out then. Let's go on this hill. <laughs> this is so clumsy. Still, though, able to move on this terrain, which is significantly better than before. Okay, let's do this. So all my guns are at a slightly different altitude. And aiming using the map. Still a bit off though. There we go, direct hit. Just hitting the bottom though, we need to hit the top of it. This is so much more difficult than it looks, I'm sorry for those who are getting triggered by my misses. To be fair, most of them have hit a little bit, just trying to get a direct good shot on the top. There we go! Enemies destroyed, and we didn't even get close to them. I really love this vehicle so much. Let's just put these in the black hole. Then we'll go and do another mission with this. Then we'll swap over to the tank. Okay. Biggest weakness, firing downhill. Let's see how bad this is going to be. From here, that's never going to hit. None of the weapons are even trying to target. How about there? No. Oh, this one started to. Aha! Didn't expect that, did you, little guy? Yep. Try to be smart when it comes to engaging in combat and know when to run away. Because if that was a larger target, I would be dead by now. Even with the shields, that would just be such a nightmare. 
I'm so used to guns that can swivel. There we go. Weirdly enough, that little guy was more of a problem than the huge enemies at long distance. Hello. <laughs> Maybe some weapons on the back wouldn't be bad as well. Just something small like the little stud lasers or something. Just something that can fire backwards so that when something tries to get around us, we can actually hit them. Like maybe one of the auto cannons or something. Because that way, if they're forward like that, will that fire even though it can't hit? Oh, it can go through. I was thinking maybe like... There we go. So that can't currently fire. But I think if we were targeting something behind us, is that enemy small enough for us to test on? Yes, it is. So let's say this guy here gets behind us. I think it will still swivel to aim. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. What? A oh, no, no, correct. There we go. So it will only fire... When there is an enemy it can actually aim at. Although it does seem a bit weird about it. Mm. Okay, further tests are required. Dead drop. Find the delivery crate. Is it by any chance the thing there with the giant question mark above it? And pop. Thank you. I'm going to assume, get close, back off very, very quickly. Backing off very, well, as fast as this vehicle will actually go. Faster, faster. Oh, and you are gone. Oh, apparently we actually backed off fast enough that they didn't chase me. Yeah, maybe I should make the angle a bit more severe again. It feels a bit too short range on flat or slightly downhill terrain. I mean, it works because the enemy have such a very, very small aggro radius. Hey, Paul, is someone shooting us? Paul? Paul! And Paul was already dead by a big Bertha cannon to the face. And then so went Frank. But no one cared about Frank. Fight me. I mean, I did. And we get... Christmas! Excellent. I've always wanted Christmas in a box. It does make Christmas so much easier. Okay, so I think we can assume then... Oh, look. I think over there. Okay, we'll assume afterwards. Oh, hello. I almost didn't see you over there. How are you doing? Yeah, this cannon is so powerful. Even just a couple of direct hits and they're down. If all of the shots hit, it seems to tear through anything. Especially if the shots are a bit more scattered. Uh, I'll put down the black hole in a second. And actually I'll approach this from a slightly different angle. So the enemy isn't firing at me straight away. Thank you. As my toads go mental in the background again, because apparently I just can't have a quiet room when I try to record. Uh oh. Uh oh look, it's a trap! Who would have expected this? Certainly not I. Oh, too close, too close, too close. Um no, never mind, not that close actually. Boop. Even after the explosive nerfs. If you've got six, sorry, nine guns firing at someone, it's gonna really hurt. Did I say six earlier? I feel like I might have- Whoa. Where did your cab go? Over there, apparently. Wow, okay, that's- that gotta hurt. Actually, would it hurt? Because that was pretty quick. I'd say that's quite a painless death. We're being really nice, actually. Also, one vehicle I really want to make soon is a melee vehicle. A proper close quarters vehicle, because I've never actually made one properly in Terratech. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we just destroy everything. We have almost nothing to scrap afterwards. Did we get any Christmas? No, but we got a few pretty coloured blocks. Oh, you're not coloured block at all. You're money. I much prefer money. Didn't mean to fire then. Was hoping it wouldn't destroy anything, and it didn't. So what I was going to say earlier is we can now safely assume that this vehicle will be good in all situations. And those blocks just vanished. I did not know that blocks now have a timeout period. 
There was definitely something there just then, wasn't there? I'm gonna look back at the recording. So yeah, the wheel suddenly popped in out of nowhere and my microphone is still playing up. I have mentioned it a few times in the comment section. I do try to lessen the effect it's having on the actual recording by putting my voice through several layers of software to try and remove the effects, but my microphone is I think breaking after testing it out with so many things, it does seem to be the mic alone which is messing up, especially if I haven't spoken for a while and then start to speak, there's a crackling effect to my voice and I just can't stop it from doing it, but other less good microphones aren't having that effect and I've tried several recording softwares and now I'm just rambling. So thank you so much for watching. In the next video we will be testing out the tank and making its final form, but right now I am really, really happy with this vehicle and I think I will will be naming it. One of the only named vehicles in my TerraTech arsenal. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.